Okay, we're starting uh, part two here called of uh, what I call pre-processing. Um, if you hear dogs wrestling in the background, my apologies, my dogs. Um, for the most part, they're quiet, but sometimes they get a little feisty. So if you hear them growling or anything, just uh, try to disregard that. I'm trying to get these uh, videos recorded all today so that that way um, they will be helpful to our community. Um, so yeah, this, this second part is what I call uh, pre-processing, and I think you'll see the reason why I divide this between pre-processing and processing here as we get into part two of this video. Um, so really the first step, once you get everything stacked, is to go and open the master light frame that you've just stacked. And so in the previous video, you saw where that video, um, you, you see where that image gets stored. And so I'm going to go ahead and open that now. And whenever you open it, it, it will immediately open a couple of other windows along with it. It'll show you a view of the low image uh, pixels that it has rejected out of the stack, which this shows how the um, image rotated over the course of about two hours of imaging. And then you'll also see the high set. Hey guys, hold on one second. I'm going to have to pause the video. Okay. Hopefully my dogs will behave. Um, so yeah, so it, so it just opens up these two windows and you don't need these. You can go ahead and close those. It's just part of the data set. And so once you get the image open, the first thing you want to do is come over here to process and come over here to the screen transfer function and go ahead and open that. And then you'll want to unlink the RGB color channels. Uh, that's what this little image does. And so you want to make sure that's unselected because until we get rid of the, um, the reason if you have this linked and you go to stretch it and you click this little nuclear icon here, it's going to show you an image with too much green. And the reason for that is because one shot color camera um, images um, have two green pixels to every red and blue pixel. And so you're just dealing with how the data is read. And this is simple to deal with once we get in here to pre-processing and post-process and, and, and processing the image. But what you want to do when you first open a raw image that you've stacked is just to go ahead and unlink and then re-click this nuclear auto stretch image icon. And, and what this does is it's reading the image data and it's basically trying to um, stretch all the data there to, to, a, to a base level so that you can see what's there within the photons that were kept captured in every uh, pixel of the sensor. And so we have a good stretch here. We can see our target that we were looking at, Thor's helmet. And what I'm going to do uh, really right away is I always like to go ahead and crop and rotate the image. Now what this is going to do, it's going to it's going to throw up a warning when you do that. Hold on one second. Okay, what it's going to do is it's going to throw up a warning. So let me go ahead. I'm going to go ahead first and crop this. And the reason I want to crop out or crop this image is to get rid of some of these um, artifacts that could begin to throw off your image processing later in the workflow um, because you're going to be looking at data that just has issues. And for, for, for lack of a better way to put it, every image that you stack is going to have some kind of artifacting along the edges that you'll need to deal with. Even if you have your CSAR st set up in the EQ mod mode, you're still going to have um, stacking artifacts that you'll want to crop out from the very beginning. So what we do for that is we come over here to process dynamic crop, and then we can draw a box around the area of the image that we want to keep. And so I'm going to probably come along here and make this area the crop and cut out the rest of this. So everything outside of this gray box will be discarded. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. We're going to get the warning that we're losing our astrometric solution. And what that is, is um, there's actually coordinates um, to the night sky that's built into this image when it stacks it. That all comes from the CSTAR S50. So it knows what astronomical image you're looking at. It's okay, uh, we'll, we'll lose this, but there's an easy way to regain that that you'll see here in just a moment. So we're gonna go ahead and dynamic crop this image. And then at the same time, we're going to go ahead and rotate this image. With uh, Thor's helmet, this is kind of an odd um, orientation for this. And again, with the CSAR S50, you really can't control your image orientation um, while you're shooting the image. You have to do that in post-processing or um, 
what I call pre-processing here. And so to rotate the image, you come over here to image, you come to geometry, and we're going to rotate it counterclockwise 90 degrees. Then we're going to click this little box here that basically gives you an auto um, resize of the image window that you're looking at. And this begins to look like a more um, consistent orientation to what we typically see online. If you type in Thor's helmet on a Google image search, you'll see that. So yeah, we've <clears throat> cropped and rotated the image. And so at this point, we're going to go ahead and re-image um, solve this image to get back that astrometric solution that we lost earlier. And you'll see why that solution is important here when we get to uh, spectrophotometric color calibration. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and close the dynamic crop window. We've rotated the image and we're gonna come over here to script and we're going to come into image analysis and click on image solver. And when we do that, it's going to bring up an, uh, a, <coughs> a window here with already uh, certain coordinates in here. Um, and these are all still a part of the image, but we just have to kind of come in here and reconfirm um, what it is that the system is looking at. Um, the size of the image sensor on the C-Star S50 is 2.9 microns. And then our focal distance is about 250 millimeters. And so really all you should have to do here is come in, uh, open this window, and then click OK. It's really that simple. It's going to run through. It's going to download some data here. Um, you know, I might need to look at one more thing here once this is done running. This, this is fairly quick. OK. And so it's re- um, it's recalibrate this image and put that data back in there, giving you RA and deck coordinates of what it is that you're looking here within the image. You might have an issue when you first open this uh, image solver script where you might need to, um, it, if you don't have an internet connection when you're running this software, you might get an error thrown over here in the um, console window. So, you know, part of this assumes that you have the internet connected because it is going to pull down fresh data online every time you solve an image. And so if you don't have internet, you will just need to uh, get the Gaia um, catalog locally on your computer. But for sake of time, we're not going to go through that now. Um, I'm assuming that everyone has an internet connection and will be able to utilize that. So um, anyway, I just wanted to make sure I explained that. Once you have the image solved, that's really what I call the few steps of pre-processing. So when you open your raw image, you want to go ahead and crop it with dynamic crop, which is right over here. And then you want to go ahead and rotate the image with image geometry. And once you get that done, you want to resolve the image plate solving. Um, because that's going to become very important here in the next few steps as we get into color calibrating the image and going further. So that's pre-processing. Hope that's been helpful. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. But uh, as we get started here with processing this image, just want to break this up into manageable chunks as we talk about the different steps of this workflow. Thanks.